Guys, go check out our Patreon where you can get our daily morning show and next week's episode today. Welcome back to the basement yard. Danny, how you doing? You look like a little cabana boy. Hey, adios, <laughs> mio, claro, Casey, and Jojo. Dude, you look like you've been doing mega amounts of coke on. Uh, you know, been there, done that. Been there, done that. It looks like you're just fucking crushing it, though, honestly. It looks like you haven't been to 7-Eleven in a while. I've been hiding out from 7-Eleven. Uh, I've really, I've started the boycott. The boycott is out. The boycott mm. is real. Never going back. That's really cute. I like you, that. You look fucking cute. Do I? Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like you could be a sunglasses guy, but you're just not into it. I mean, I'll be into it. You want me to be a sunglasses guy? Just wear them twenty four seven. Never see that. But I got I got beautiful I got beautiful things. Hazel know? hazel eyes. No, hazel. I don't know if they're hazel. What color is hazel? I don't even fucking know. Is that I think, brown? I think it's like greenish gray. Yeah, I don't know. You know? I just put a I put green on my my license, and I don't think that's right. Like I think they're just brown you know it's weird you know it's weird how they make you put your height on your license but you're sitting down when you get pulled over that's interesting right maybe maybe it's for bars what do they need the height for though but also everyone's like around like everyone varies from like five seven to six foot for the most part right i would say so so like what are we really doing here like obviously i'm not going to try and use some yao ming's fucking license to get into a club underaged you know i i don't miss those days at all do you remember the fucking stress and the fuck yeah. and the absolute throbbing of your heart that would happen as you were walking like, up wait, to a goddamn they, uh, bar do they go hard do they go hard on do they check <laughs> yeah you just have to know like the like the uh you be like, yo like what's the id sitch yeah, like, nah they they're scan? cool nah they're mad lean i'm like all right cool let's they're go mad lean they're mad lean. Um, Dude, I was going to clubs when I was like a senior in high school, and it was so obvious that everyone in there was underage. And it's like, how do these people have a liquor license? It's just out of control. Yeah, because you just go to like Pasha Teen Night and shit. Bro, pa- yo, Teen Night's back in the day? I used to <laughs> grind yeah. on so much ass. Dude, Teen Night's were, <laughs> <laughs> teen nights were where it was at because it was yeah. the oldest you could get and the grossest you could get in a controlled environment. And, it, and there was no alcoholic drinks. It was like, you go to a teen night, everyone's dressed up, right? And we had, like, baggy-ass jeans and shit. And then we get in there, and then fucking gasolina would come on. It's like, and you're like, oh! I'll be like, and you're yo. like, fucking, Start going and, crazy. I, and then Rompe would come on And he'd be like Yo I'm trying to throw A fucking table right now Rompe And you're like Yo <laughs> Rompe 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 The pay yo. The pay on Rompe Was so powerful Oh so Pay It was, pay. It was crazy dude. Rompe I'm like god damn And you're like damn, dude. I have no idea What daddy Yankee's saying Daddy Yankee I'm sorry Daddy Yankee no Daddy Yankee yeah, da- Daddy Yankee Yosef, I have no idea Yosef. what you're saying. You be Yosef. Yeah, yo, that shit was fucking dope, though. I used to go to Teen Night. It was cool. Have you, you ever? Know? Did you ever go to Palladium? What the fuck is that? What is that? A spaceship? I think you're. I think you're a little bit young. Oh, I want to talk about that spaceship, by the way. Uh, you're you're a little young, maybe for Palladium, but Palladium used to be like this Teen Night place, and it used to in New York, and it used to always be where like. Everybody, as soon as here's the thing about teen nights, as soon as you entered through the door, you thought you were 27 years old. Yeah, and also there was about like eight groups of guys looking at you, like they wanted to fight you for some reason. Everyone that's, wanted to fight. That's the next thing I was gonna say. Everybody wanted to try and kill someone on yeah. teen night. I don't know yeah. what the fuck that was about, but everybody wanted to kill somebody. A lot of me. Yeah, I was just looking for love. I was just looking for love. I know that you're looking for me because I'm looking for, looking you, for you and, and we're, we're looking, looking for love. love. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Danny Lopiori exclusive. Okay. Yeah, man. I wrote that song uh, on a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> on a bridge. You remember that Will um, Ferrell Gap commercial? He's like, I wrote this song on the back of a Dixie cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Damn you. I miss T night. There was a club over here called Remy. And that's, and like, that's where we used to go, you know? And I remember one time, uh, you know, we went to a teen night and, uh, we went to Remy and we had, it was some girl's like birthday or whatever. And then we left and we were sleeping at my friend's house and his older brothers came home and they were all Moroccan. So they had like, and they were like, 
you know, they had like broken English and shit. And I remember this one dude came back and I was like, you know, just a little, this little white kid. And he goes, oh, this kid, he looked like a sperm. And I was like, damn, so he violated me. Damn, he said you look like a sperm? Yeah, which I don't look like a sperm. Come how, on. How would he know? He's Moroccan. He doesn't know what sperm looks like. I mean, what does that mean? They have aren't, sperm. Aren't they not allowed to have sex until they get married? Dude, he's, he's spermed. He's nah. obviously spermed. Nah, I don't, I, I, don't think, I don't think you're allowed to sperm. No, I think you can sperm. I, I, I don't know where you're getting this. I, you can... You sperm by accident back then, don't you? When you're like when you're like eleven, don't you just like you're sperming at night or something? I don't have I didn't never had wet dreams. Let me tell you I something. I never woke up like, yo, I'm soaked in my own stuff of my own gravy. I was sperming. I was sperming. Yeah, and, you, it, and it wasn't no it wasn't spermer. no accident. I'll tell you that. <laughs> this is purposeful sperm. I was sperming and it was no accident. Uh yeah. so I'm trying to see what what else is on that outfit of yours over there. I'm trying to like get a little gander. I'm trying yeah, to actually make. I'm making my FaceTime uh, screen bigger. bigger so I can see no, more of you. You know, I just got a hat. I got some glasses. I got a long sleeve on. You know what I'm saying? I got. You, look, you know. You look awesome. You look I awesome. Look, I'm relaxed. I'm having a nice day. How do you feel about this Elon Musk uh, fucking spaceship shit? Yeah, I don't know what is going on. What he was supposed to go to space and then it, it rained. Yeah, and then it rained. I didn't know Isn't rain would affect. I didn't know rain would affect space. Yeah, a rain affects a fucking rocket. What is the rocket not going to catch fire? It's a rocket. You know what I looked up the other day? This is very morbid. I'm sorry. Uh, remember when the Challenger, that spaceship, blew up? Oh, yeah. I have went down that rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. Apparently, they didn't die on the explosion. Yeah, they, they plummeted. They plummeted to their doves. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was fucked, dude. I, I, it, that came on TV not too long ago. There was like a quick mention of it. And I asked my mom, like, do you remember this? She's like, yeah. I don't because I wasn't alive. But um, I remember like learning about it in school. And for some reason, I remember, I think there was like a woman like teacher. It was like the first woman ever in space. I don't know. That they were going to send up and she died. Um, this Yo, is... I'll I watched that, and I remember me, you, and Pete had an argument about how we should go back to the moon. It would be dope. Now it's like, uh, now I'm fully on board with Pete. Not going to the moon? Yeah, because it's too dangerous. I mean, yeah, it is. It's Elon's too gonna go there, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, Elon's gonna go there. Didn't he name his kid like AX, like Infinity Symbol? Yeah, he named his he named his kid like some algebra problem or some shit. Like it was like a equals b squared c. It was like the Pythagorean theorem or something. He named his kid after the Pythagorean. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> he named it something, dude. Something that uh, I don't know. What do you a th- proof? What are your thoughts on like names like that? Like a part of me feels like all right, that's kind of cool. Like you break the mold, name your kid after a fucking robot. That's dope. But like. It's a little OD nah, bro. at the same time. Nah, it's OD, bro. You can't, you can't like, you know, be yelling, you know, equations to come downstairs and for dinner. Like that's ridiculous. Like give him a name. Yeah, just a parentheses. Get downstairs. <laughs> yeah. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Get down here right now. All three of you. <laughs> All three of you. Yeah. In the exactly. kitchen now. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to like, yo. Know, you will I, not. I just, you will not believe. You will not believe what quadratic equations said to me today. Yeah, wait till your father hears about this. <laughs> quadratic equation is that the right thing? Quadratic equation. Yeah, bro, I'm out of the game. So I mean, you had me <laughs> at like all those syllables. I would have believed you if you said anything, dog. Yeah, I mean, listen. If Elon Musk wants to go privately to the moon, let him go privately to the moon. Oh, go crazy. Go Don't cra- make me go though. Don't make me go. Don't, Don't make dare, me go. If there's a, uh, a, a, like, listen, I know back in the day there was a war and then there was a draft, right? Yeah. But if there's a, if there's an outer space war with aliens, do not draft me because I'm not going in a spaceship to that fight would, aliens. Uh, yeah. Because as Americans, we never fight here except for the civil war when we fought each other. Yeah. We don't fight here. So we would definitely have to go to space. There is no way you're getting my brown cheeks. On a yeah, fucking no. spacecraft. You There's couldn't no fucking way. pay me. I don't like going that fast. You know what I'm saying? And like even in a plane, 
I don't like looking at the clouds because if they start moving quickly, I realize how fast I'm going, and then the boy gets shook up. Oh, yeah. Would you rather be in a disaster on a spaceship or a submarine? Okay. What the fuck? First of all, spaceship. Spaceship. Elaborate. Well, actually... Yeah, think about nah, it. No, nah, no, spaceship. Because then at least it would be pretty. You die in a submarine, it's just black. I mean, it's not like you could... It's not... You, unless you're in the Bahamas and you're in that blue fucking water that you could actually see sh- oh, sharks while I'm suffocating. So you would get to, like, just float away. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I don't what, know. If there was an Armageddon, like, space team assembling, and for some reason you had some weird trait that they wanted you to go... I just and had, it, like, this skill. Yeah, you just had this weird skill. Like, they went around like the Mighty Ducks, nah. just, like, picking up, picking up kids in alleys that, like, had bad parents and, like, made they them go on. They had that quail sp- call. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, oh, shit. Just, gra- like, rounding up these fucking, like, uh, like you know, knock-around fucking uh, astronauts. And you were one. They picked you. Yeah. And yeah. it meant that the entire human race lives. Are you going to go to space? Nah, but I would put up a, a like a really good master class so people could pay ten dollars to like <laughs> learn what I learned. You know what I'm saying? So I'll teach someone how to do it, but I'm not going to space. Would you go in one of those zero gravity airplanes? Oh my god, dude. No, I'd I'd rather have a pretty decent burn on my leg than do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather like sign up to like step very quickly into lava. You would never go on one of those zero gravity planes, dude. People like vomit on those like all the time. It's yeah. dr- it's like insane. That's a small price to pay to float, be floatless. What what what? That's not it. That's not it, dude. To be weightless. If anything, you get a lot of float. You're not floatless. We're floatless right now. We need some float. Imagine. Yo, gravity's so weird because this is why we should have <laughs> never. This is why we should have never went to space. We should have never yeah. figured out that gravity cannot exist. Because now I'm afraid that one day the gravity is just gonna stop on Earth. Just reverse. You just reverse. And then we'll just be floating. Can you imagine that? You wake up and you're like an inch from the ceiling, and then you have to swim back down to your bed, and you're scared. What if I take a poop? You take a poop. It would float. Poop. Poop. It, you know, is affected by gravity. Poop's just... Now there's just poop in, you know, everywhere. Now, now you have to grab it. It'd be like this, like this thing just floating in the air, just like... Yeah, and you have to gra- and you have to fucking, you know, grab it and stuff it in a... What? I don't know. It's, or would you just shit up? Shit, yeah, shit upwards? Yeah, I would point my asshole up to the sky and shit upwards. <laughs> it would affect weather and shit. It'd be dope. Be mad palouche, dude. And you would know when anybody took a shit. Like, it would come out your chimney. I'd be like, yo, somebody at Joe's house just took a shit. Damn, dude. Someone just took a major <laughs> shit over there. <laughs> Couple houses down. I would pay money to shit in space. Wait, is there smells in space? Like, can you smell stuff? No. No um, smells? No smells? I think there are. No stink? Didn't we bring a moon rock back? I didn't bring shit back, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. And also, the thing would smell here because we have, you know, gravity. I think gravity and smell kind of go together. <laughs> but uh, I don't think fuck. things smell in space. Like, you can't smell an asteroid or, like, no, you know how, like, you can smell when it's about to rain? Like, if you're in space, you're like, damn, you know, I smell something coming. Yo, how good is the smell of, like, rain on, like, a, like, on concrete? I love that smell, man. It's like, damn. It makes me want to, like... Like, walk around and just cry or something. Yeah, like, it feels like everything's okay. Like, everything's going to be all right. What the fuck is rain? Water. Bro, we (laughs) Got it. (laughs) We have stuff that falls from the sky, and we just accept it. We just drink that, bitch. We're just like, nah, this is cool. Yeah, man. I don't like to think about stuff like this. Because, like, once I start thinking about, like, yo, what is rain? Why do we just accept rain? But we just do. You know like, what I'm saying? Like, what, would be, what else would we be willing to accept is, is what I'm saying. I don't I – definitely not if people started shitting in the air. I would accept air shit. No, nah, I wouldn't. I can't. I can't. You'd be walking around, like, dodging them like they're fucking mosquitoes. There'd be little pellets of poop everywhere. That'd be like – it's, like, probably, like, when you shit in a pool. That's what it is. 
I've never shit in a pool nor experienced shit in a pool. I can only imagine though. It's like, you know, I've poured like a little bit of milk into a glass of water and it just spreads. That's exactly what it does. Fucking gross. That's exactly what it does. That's exactly what it does. But yeah, no, no, my whole thing is I'd rather, I, I think I'd rather be in a submarine. Ugh. But I don't know how deep a submarine goes, cause like deep. Yeah, but you have at least a better chance to get to the top than you do to get back from outer fucking space. <laughs> yeah, cause you can always you can always <laughs> swim to the surface. You can't swim your way back into the atmosphere. Even if you did swim your way back to the atmosphere, you're flying towards the ground. Dude. Hell yeah! Wait, can you just swim back into the atmosphere, dude? Can you, you would... swim in space? Yeah, I guess. Oh, hold on, hold on. To move in space, it probably doesn't take that much force because there's no gravity, right? So if someone just gave me a quick push, then I would float who knows how far. So if I was outside of the atmosphere and someone just pushed me and I started going towards the atmosphere, <laughs> or this, I don't know if this is the right terminology, and then I broke the atmosphere, right? Would I just start making a beeline for the fucking ground? Yeah, you would burn up. Yeah, I would burn up before I even landed. My teeth would just land in some fucking random ranch in Idaho or some shit. I'll tell you this, though. What a fucking way to go out. What a way, dude. How did Joe die? How did Joe die? Uh, Entering the Earth's atmosphere? Dude, he's (laughs) he was a meteorite. (laughs) That's how. (laughs) Okay, like the dude was a meteorite. He was out of the atmosphere and swam his way back into his death. And then that's the other reason why I would die in a submarine. The other reason I would die in a submarine is because it would be quicker. What if you just got in space and now you're just floating in space, dude, until you starve to death? Dude, I'm sure I'd be sucked into a, like a black hole and then I'd end up in some weird upside down thing where people have asses where their mouths are and shit. Like some weird upside down. That'd be kind of fire, though. And I'd be like a thousand years old, like immediately. Like I, my whole life, I'd just be a thousand. And I'd be Asian. I just farted when I left. I, <laughs> I got to make sure to boost the audio there. You can oh, hear it. man. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, you, you, you'd 100% for sure be Asian. Um, I feel like Asian people could live to be a thousand, you know? Especially in space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm because isn't the, fourth, isn't the fourth dimension time? What does it have to do with Asian people? Also, I don't even know if that's correct. I don't know what the first dimension is, dog. Like, I don't know. The f- what are the wait? What are the dimensions? <laughs> I dude, I know three D. That's it. Two D is like flat. Three D is like it pops out a little bit. One D is a is an English pop band, and four D is you know that's up in the air. I don't know. All right, the three dimensions of the universe. Uh, what the fuck? Uh... Uh, classic physics theories describe three physical dimensions from a particular point in space and directions in which we can move our up down left right and forward and back but uh, uh, yeah i don't know what any of that means if you search 1d you'll get a whole lot of one direction songs and oh, those it's, are fire it's length width and height <laughs> what's that um those are the dimensions, the three dimensions. <laughs> Dude, no. Yeah. <laughs> Those are dimensions of like physical things, like this table, the length, the width, and the height. Not yeah, like but, no, 2D but I think, and 3D. I, I, yeah, but I think that's being able to see it. Like, can't some people only see 2D? Like, there's like a condition. Oh, wait, no, yeah, like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, what'd you say? Some people can only see in 2D? Yeah, I think some people can only see in 2D. There's a, there's a, like, they have <laughs> Minecraft brains. I don't think that's true. You yes. think that they see the world as just a flat surface? Bro. Like a piece of paper? Dude, I'm telling you, there's people that have a 2D, like, disability. So what if you just stand in front of them? They're like, you're a piece of paper. Like, stand sideways in front of them. They wouldn't be able to see your length your width or your height yo okay it's called stereo blindness is what it's called it's the inability to see 3d using stereopisis stereopisis or stereo vision resulting in illo an inabil fuck (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah 
resulting in an inability to perceive stereoscopic depth by combining and comparing images from the two eyes. Individuals will only want with only one functioning eye have this condition. So yes, you could see shit in 2D. You could be a 2D scene motherfucker. I don't know, but I don't, yeah. Yes, dude, I'm telling you. Whatever, dude. I don't know. At the end of the day, this all comes down to the fact that I'm not going to fucking space. I don't care how many Ds are up there. Bro, I would get so gay in space. Why? Because no one could no one's going to know. I don't think anyone would know if you got gay down here. Let me. <laughs> oh, they would. Uh, they could smell you. Yeah, that's you definitely true. can't smell gayness up there. <laughs> <laughs> There's no sense in space. Imagine if you could tell somebody who's gay just by smelling them. <laughs> say we say, say say we went to a tea night and we were just like, yeah, somebody gays in here. <laughs> What's that smell? It smells gay. <laughs> Gay. Even you though, like, smell if, it? if something could smell gay, it would smell mad good, probably. Yo, gay people smell fantastic. Mm. Yo, why do babies smell like that? Why do babies and puppies smell the same? Yeah, why do babies smell like a like a like a thermos or some shit? I could, yeah, they 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 smell like <laughs> like like an old soup can that has been yeah. hollowed out. Yeah, but I, but I could smell that baby's head all day. Smelling a baby's I, head is awesome. I love it as much like how I love candy corn, where it's like I don't, I don't really love it, but I can't stop smelling this fucking baby's head. Yeah, baby smells like it smells like a thermos or like one of those old lung, lunch boxes with nothing in it. There is nothing more disgusting than the smell of like a, a protein shaker. Yeah. After you've left like some protein in there for too long, yeah. it is the worst smell ever. Babies don't smell like that. No, babies smell way better. They they smell like a like a low form of milk. Babies kind of smell like an empty room. <laughs> but but like for like, young, you know but like you for young people. A, no, but like you know when you go to like to see an apartment, right? And you're like, oh, this is the master bedroom. And you walk in and you smell that. Babies kind of smell like that. Yeah, yeah. They smell like a master bedroom in an empty apartment, dude. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do, brother. Uh, <laughs> another great smell, though, is a puppy's breath. Yeah, even if it stinks, you're like, God, I love this stench. Just keep breathing in my mouth. Yeah, I don't like when anyone breathes in my mouth. But I'll let a dog breathe in my mouth. I wouldn't even let a baby breathe in my mouth because I'm afraid of, you know, they just vomit randomly. Dogs, though, you can breathe in my mouth all you want. Yo, think about how dumb babies are. We've talked about this. Um, but I would love to be a baby for one day. Like, if they could if they could conduct an experiment. <laughs> you were a baby for mad days, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. no I'm, I'm talking about right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with your consciousness. If you could... Like, if someone came to you, they're like, hey, listen, for like $10,000, you could go back and experience your birth. Would you do it? And I'd be aware? You'd be aware. Ugh, I don't know. I, I think... heard, like, doing DMTs like that. Some people have experiences where they, like, they feel like they were born, like they relived their birth. Listen, I've had my fun with uh, extracurricular activities. Um I feel like when people use drugs, though, like the way they explain it is way like crazier than it actually is. Yeah. Also, there's nothing appealing. Like if someone was like, you know, like, I don't know, just to me, because I'm a control freak or whatever. Someone's like, yo, you got to do DMT because you're going to see your inner demons and then you're going to fuck the Lord. And you're like, I don't want to do any of that shit, dude. And <laughs> yo, I was walking down the street and the fucking earth just turned into lava, but my feet were fine, and then elephants were swimming in it, and I'm like, bro, I don't want to live in this world. What, is, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, I, I, listen, I, I did shrooms once. The only, here's the only thing about hardcore drugs. You get so high that you have a point where you just go, yeah, I don't want to be high anymore. I'm good. <laughs> like, all music was just like, and, I, and like, shit was melting. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I'm good. Like, I don't need to do any of this shit ever again in my life. Yeah, I don't even, I don't, I don't 
have an interest. I'm too afraid of shit like that, dude. I think at some point you might get so rich that you'll get bored and start doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what rich people do? Yeah, dude. Speaking of rich people, dude, I watched the Epstein documentary, the whole thing yesterday. Oh, I got to watch it. Has, dude, not to be funny, but... This is a very serious statement, not trying to like incite laughter. That dude fucked so many children. <laughs> I'm serious. Hell it's, yeah, he it's did. insane that it's like we knew we knew it was bad, right? This dude had an island and shit. When you watch that doc, you go, This guy fucked way more pe- like children than I thought. Which I thought was impossible. Because one is enough. And like twenty is also enough. But when you figure out he's been doing this yeah, I, for I fucking so. 20 years, you're like, how many children? Like, it's just fucking, it's sick. It's disgusting. And it's all rooted in money and power of just being like, yeah, I'll cover it up because you'll give me this amount of money or you'll like whatever. And then it was just kids just, you know, just getting fucking. And the dude was getting massages from children every night in, in fucking Florida. It was dis- It was just gross. Uh, Florida. Florida, Palm, West Palm Beach. <laughs> yeah, real nice. Big house. Get to hide all the children in it. <laughs> Dude, he had the same routine. He'd I, don't mean, him... I don't mean the laugh. But it's just funny. No, I mean, <laughs> the, story the way I'm saying it's funny. <laughs> the way I'm just saying it's funny. But, like, he would just have children come over, right? In age, and he would make them recruit their friends and pay them all, like, 200 or $300 and just come over, and they'd be giving them a massage, and then he'd turn over with his dick out, and then stuff would happen. It's crazy to me that parents, like even back to Michael Jackson, parents have a price for their children's assholes, which is crazy to me. God. I mean, they didn't, I mean, here's the thing. I think that people were just blinded by Michael Jackson and they're like, oh my God, Michael Jackson. But even if I was a parent. <laughs> oh my God, he, Michael Jackson. <laughs> no, but seriously, but I think that even like as... I'm not a parent, but I'm just thinking like logically, like I'm trying to think of someone like if LeBron James really wanted to hang out with my son and he would come over my house and play with my son in his room, I'd be like, dude, LeBron James is a fucking weirdo. Like great basketball player. I'll wear your Jersey, but you're not staying the night dog. All I right? ca- get the I, fuck out. I asked my mom, I said, cause my mom did a music video with Michael Jackson once. Um, what? Well, yeah, yeah, she worked on the on a music video with Michael Jackson and Spike Lee. It was that song. They don't really care about us. No. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, they did two videos. They did one in a jail, and then he did one in like Brazil. Uh, she did the one in the jail with Spike Lee. So I was like, Mom, like when you were around Mike, like was he weird? She was just like he was like very quiet and like he had an umbrella all the time and shit. <laughs> and, then, and then I asked her. <laughs> and then I asked her. I asked her. I said, Listen, Mom. Have you watched the, the Michael documentary? And she was like, no, I, I, I haven't watched it. I said, Mom, if I was eight years old and Michael Jackson asked you to let me sleep at his house, would you? And she said, yeah, I would probably let it happen. This is how blinded people are by celebrity. I was like, Mom, what are you talking about? You would never let me sleep at a man's house at eight years old. What's wrong with you? And then she was yeah. like, no, nah. she was like, uh, no, nah, now that I think about it, like, no, nah, I probably wouldn't let it happen. But, like, I wouldn't think anything bad would happen. I go, there it is. That's the same thing. It's the but, like, same thing. I'm just thinking of, like, yo, what does a grown man want with my fucking child who's 11? That's just the, that's the only thing that bothers me about stuff is, like, settlements. It's like, you know, like, this person did this or whatever. Like, expose them. Fuck $10 million. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, yo, my kid, like, a grown man wants to come over and play trains with my kid? Like, the fuck, dude? I'm like, what I'm happened? Michael Jackson. Go ha- play trains with some fucking else. Yo. You could go play with actual trains if you're Michael Jackson. Why would you play with toy trains with my kid? A multiple cage. Was yeah. It, was the Epstein documentary, like, good or was it just, like, ridiculous? Define good. Like, it's like, oh, that was a really good documentary, like informative. I mean, it was informative because I learned like, like they go all the way back to, you don't even realize how long ago this started. 
and how he just manipulated his way into his wealth and into like just this thing. And also they had co-conspirators that were helping him recruit these girls and they all got off too. Like what is going on? And I saw, um, it always brings me back. Remember like Jared Fogle? Did you ever hear his phone call? His phone call? Oh yeah. With some woman. Yeah. He's a freak. Sex trafficking is one of the scariest things in the world. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Like it always makes me think of like taken. Like I would love to just like Liam Neeson, like a sex trafficked house. <sighs> just kick the door in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Start popping I off. Mean, it's just, it's, it's wild. But anyway, uh, let's get to these ads. <laughs> All right, seriously, let's get to these ads, though, okay? Um, first, uh, Liquid IV. Used this the other day. Um, I was a little hungover, but Liquid IV helps with uh, hydration, okay? Each serving provides as much hydration as two to three bottles of water, plus vitamin C, B3, B5, B6, and B12. You got all those Bs, okay, in this one thing. It's a little packet. You open it. You put it in, I believe, 16 ounces of water. You mix it up, and they taste amazing. They have three flavors, uh, passion fruit, lemon lime and some other shit that I can't remember at the moment, but they're all good. I've tried all of them. I have them all over there in the corner next to my coffee machine because it's either coffee or liquid IV in the morning. To be honest with you this morning, it was liquid IV lemon lime. How you doing? Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, dehydration occurs in three out of four people. Cause you people aren't drinking enough water. Um, so if you want to feel more hydrated, more energy, you know, this is an easy way to stay hydrated. Uh, go to liquidiv.com. Use the code BASEMENT at checkout. You get 25% off anything you order when you use the promo code BASEMENT, okay? Liquidiv.com uh, and use the promo code BASEMENT and you will get 25% off of anything you order, okay? So go check it out. Uh, next here, <clears throat> we have Fiverr, um, which will connect you to uh, the right freelancer, and you know help you get your work done so whatever you need you need someone to help you with graphic design or you know something web design or anything like that uh you can just go on to fiverr pretty much anything honestly i've gone on fiverr and i've used it for graphic design before where you look and you see someone's price you see how long it takes them some people do it in 24 hours you'd be like here's some stuff about a logo i need and then you you know you get you get your artwork once you approve it then the payment goes through so it's not like you pay for it and then they give you back some like shitty thing it's like you pay for it when you're set uh like settled on what the actual thing is going to be um you could search by service deadline price reviews and more that's another thing people have profiles so you see if they have a great review you know that they're like a reliable person um so it's good so it lets you hire freelancers with proven track record. So if you need any help with like small little things, this is an affordable way to do it. Instead of hiring, if you're a small business, you can use Fiverr. Um, but yeah, find your talent today at fiverr.com and receive 10% off your first order by using our code basement. Fiverr spelled F I V E R R.com and use the code basement for 10% off of your first order. Okay. So there you go. Uh, I saw you fumbling with the, with the cigar over there. You, uh, you puffing? No, I'm not puffing. I tried to puff it, but uh, I, I put it in my mouth sometimes. It's for the look. I don't light it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's great. That's good. What'd you want? Uh, didn't you want to talk about something that? Uh, yeah, we, I did. did. I wanted to do a together? test. I wanted to do a test here. Oh, because I thought I you found... wanted. I thought you wanted to talk about uh, <clears throat> uh, my my OPL appearance that's going to be coming out. Oh, we're gonna get to that. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's just talk about that briefly. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on other people's lives, another show that me and Greg do, uh, we interview people about something, you know, wild or unique or whatever, some fetish or whatever. They're anonymous, so they are very open about it. And we learn a lot on that show. And I, I love it. I'm a big fan of it because it's just me interviewing, me and him interviewing, you know, this guest, but we're getting all the information in real time. So it's like super interesting. And we had an erotic hypnotist come on and talk to us. And then at the end of that episode... <laughs> She gave Danny an erotic hypnosis. Yeah. Yeah. So let me just paint a picture for you, right? Me and Greg, you guys can go watch it, by the way, right now. Like, if you leave this video, go to youtube.com slash other people's lives. There's a video there about uh, erotic hypnosis. And then in the second half of that video, Danny is being hypnotized erotically. <laughs> 
Hell and yes. I and then as soon as it was over, Danny texted me and he goes, I'm hard. I'm actually hard right now. <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. But uh, so the lady was just telling us about, you know, like hypnosis. Obviously, you put people under and like get them relaxed and like they go to this different space or whatever. So she does that to Danny. And then out of no, not out of nowhere, but she slowly started working in like sexual things. And like it started to get like hot. And oh, heavy. yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, dude. It's hot as shit. And Danny's no stranger to meditation. So it's kind of similar in that sense. And I'm, when I tell you that his breathing was the funniest thing in the world, <laughs> I was trying to hold it together because every so often she'd be like, and then you're down on the grass. And then Danny would just go, <laughs> dude, it was so funny. I'm so excited for you to watch it because it wasn't actually, it wasn't like funny. It's funny because it's Danny, but it actually worked and Danny took it seriously. And that's why I asked you afterwards. I'm like, how was that? And you're like, yo, it was crazy. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was wild because like I get to spaces, like I meditate enough that I do get in the spaces where I can clear everything out. And like, you know, like when you're doing like a sexual hypnosis, like you think like, you know, you have a couple giggles in the beginning, but then like you get to this point where you're just like, holy shit. Yeah. I'm in it. I could see this. I could, f like, I felt it. I felt like the, the sex. Yeah. You, yeah. I could feel the actual sex. So you felt you felt like you were one hundred percent. Like I felt like I was like I, like I was fucking. Yeah, yeah. It was. Wild. Did you smell anything? N no, but but the thing was is like I could must have like, been in space. <laughs> yeah, no, but it was <laughs> it was very sunny like in my like visual uh, visualization, yeah. and I could feel like the sun on my eyes and shit, like on my Ooh. cheeks. Like I could feel everything, and. Uh, Wait till you guys hear like the the setting and like how it went down. Oh my but, god! But uh, it just felt so real, dude. And it was like she spent a good amount of time like uh, setting up the the setting, and and I remember just feeling like like my eyes weren't even closed, and I was like, whoa! Like she is crushing this right now because it made me feel like I was kind of there. And then there was, you know, there was other stuff that happened that you guys are just going to have to go listen to. Yeah. But it was basically the sex version of Get Out. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. I was in that I was in that sunken place and it felt good. Yes. Yeah, sank right down into your chair. Cause... Be because I would be, I would be honest. I would be honest and be like, nah, it's all right. Like, yeah. I, I would be honest. I, I, I wouldn't want to just be like this, but the fuck that shit actually worked. Yeah, that was it. Was it was cool? Yeah, but, you, uh, go yeah you guys, <laughs> you guys go check it out. Uh, just type in other people's lives into YouTube, and and, and you'll see the channel. Uh, go subscribe too. I love the fucking show. So, and we have this is my favorite season so far. We're not done recording. We have like five episodes done, and we usually do seasons of ten episodes. The five that we have though are fucking amazing, you know. And like, so you can go watch this this one right now. Um, unless you're a patron, then you're you're getting it early. But like. Um, when this comes out on YouTube for everyone, you can go watch it, youtube.com slash other people's lives. And the first episode was about how this girl thought that her dad killed her sister and like this whole thing. It was like a true crime podcast. It was crazy. Um, so it's a cool show. Go check it out. But I wanted to talk to you, Danny, about today because <laughs> I had this quiz that I found on the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, right off the bat, I'm just going to ask you a question, right? Okay. What percent, like, how gross do you think you are percentage wise now when you say gross what does that entail i guess like your hygiene and like these little things like i don't know <laughs> like your hygiene and just like gross habits i guess um i'm gonna say 26 percent. okay i'm gonna say 20 26%. I think I'm more gross. I think I'm more gross. I think that, uh, I think I'm like 41. Okay. Yeah. Right. I, I'm anywhere from like 26 to 31% gross. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm 41% gross, uh, but I could be higher. I have no idea, but I have the test. I haven't taken it. Um, I just looked at the first three questions and I was like, we have to do this. Oh, it's a test. Nice. It's a, it's a test. Yeah. So it's, so here we go. Uh, first question. How mm -hmm. often, uh, there's multiple choice, by the way. Mm -hmm. How often do you change your underwear 
every day, every couple of days, or whenever it starts to smell bad? This is a very long pause. You no, wear the same underwear two days in a row? No, 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 no. Because I'm trying to think, like, I never go to bed with the same underwear on. I'll change. I'll get into fresh underwear to get into bed. So uh, let's just go with every day. But I, I, oh, it's, it's fringe. But let's just go every day. Change it every day. I'm going to say every day, too. But there have been times where I'm like, where I'll put on a pair of underwear that I've worn before. But it doesn't happen often. No. But I've done that. I won't do that. Yeah, I've done that. So, all right, we're going every day. Uh, do you ever pick your nose? No, that's disgusting. Only in an emergency, like I can feel a boogie and got to get it out. Uh, or yes, quite often, I secretly enjoy it. Every day, quite often, and I enjoy the fucking shit out of it. I'm the same way, bro. Yeah, we dude. nose pickers, bitch. If you, don't fucking pick, nose. if you don't pick your nose, you don't care about your nose. I would almost argue that it isn't gross. Picking your nose is better than blowing your nose. Blowing your nose is a is a mockery of the nose cleaning game. And it's a public disturbance. Yeah. You know these people, white people blowing their nose is some of the loudest shit in the world. Would you blow your nose into a handkerchief at a restaurant? Into a handkerchief? No. Yes. I, I've seen people do that. That's one of the most disgusting fucking things I've ever seen. You can't blow your nose into a restaurant's thing. They do it. People do it. You got to blow your nose. If you have to blow your nose, use a napkin. You don't blow into a handkerchief. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Disgusting. Wholeheartedly. But yes, I okay. picked the fuck out of my nose. Yeah, I picked my nose too. Fucking suck me. I don't care. Um, do you do you fart in public? Oh my God, never. How gross. Sometimes they, or that's the first one. Sometimes they just slip out, but never if I can help it. Or LOL, yep, better out than in. Um, I do fart in public, but like, I'm not going to rip ass. Yeah. I mean, I fart in public, but I'm not going to be like, guys, 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 wait, listen to this one. Yeah. You're in church. Like father, one second. <laughs> <laughs> fart up. Oh, fart. Fart Gina. Shit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But no, Gina, uh, Gina fuck. Um, I will, uh, <laughs> I, I will do the. Spread my cheek, silent fart. Yeah. So I'll so fart in public. You, how you do that is you sit to one side and mm. then you just, and then you press your one cheek against the chair and then you open up so that when it comes out, it's just. Nothing better. <laughs> Nothing better. <laughs> Nothing better, dude. Dog fart. Okay. I dog fart in public. Yeah, dog farts. Okay. Uh, do you spit in public? No way. That is repulsive. If I absolutely have to, I might. Or yes, how else can you get rid of phlegm? At, uh, only if I have to. Yeah, that's my same answer, too. I don't yeah. like spitting. Who just spits in public for sport? Like, what are you, fucking Rose Dawson on the Titanic? Just <laughs> spitting on the lower class on the floor below? It's one of those things that if I do it, it's not repulsive. If I saw somebody else, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's how it is for me. But it's only like if I burp and like something comes up in my throat, like I'm not going to re-swallow this. I'm spitting it out. Oh, I, and I won't do it in front of people. Like I'll try to like wait until no one's around to spit. Yeah. But, you know, I, I do it if I really, really have to. But it's not yeah. something I just like, you know, every time I get out of my car, I'm like, yeah, pfft, <laughs> fucking, yeah. Or people who like dip in public and just spit on the street. What's the matter with you? Ding. Freaks. Okay. Would you eat food that fell on the floor? Hell no. If it was something dry that couldn't have picked up too much dirt, I might. Or three-second rule. The dry thing. Like, if I drop pizza on the floor, the dirt can get stuck to it. I'm not eating that. Right. But if you dropped a, a piece of toast or, like, a bagel... I'm going to eat... Yeah, I'm going to eat that shit. Yeah, I, I don't... If I drop stuff, I don't eat it. No, if I drop it, I'll eat it. It really depends. I guess... Where am I dropping it? If I drop it like outside, I'm not eating it no matter what. If I'm in a public place or if I'm outside. If I'm in my apartment and I drop something, if I'm not in the bathroom, then I'd probably pick it up and eat it if it was dry. Anything that hits the floor where I'm like is my habitable living space, I'm eating it. Okay, so what should we put? Uh, if, if it's not like, you know, if it can't get sucked up, I'll eat it. All right. It. Okay. Um, how often do you change your socks? Every day, every couple of days, or whenever they start to stink to high heaven and sometimes not even then. 
every day. Yeah, I change mine every day too. As long as I have socks that I fucking are clean. Yeah, like I won't put on worn socks. I'll go sockless. I'll wear like sandals. Like I'm not going to do that. Right. Would you use your significant other's toothbrush? No, that's vile. In an absolute emergency, if I had no choice, or sure, it's not a big deal. If I had no choice. Okay. My answer to that one is fucking, I would rather my teeth fall out. Yeah. That is, I don't know why, but that more than anything is just, I guess because when I was growing up, my dad used to just use my toothbrush. And when you, when this man would brush his teeth, he, the bristles would be flattened like a crop circle. Yeah. That guy like was the fucking, OD. Dude, I don't know what he was brushing, but it looked like he was jamming it in his fucking ass because <laughs> the bristles were just flat. And I'm like, dude, toothbrushes can't look like this. Like, yeah. this is insane. I just feel but, like females have cleaner mouths. Like, I'd rather use, like, my significant other's toothbrush before, like, if anybody else's. Like, I'm not going to just use a random friend's, but, like, my significant other, like, we kiss and shit. Like, I'll use that toothbrush fast. I can't. I don't know. I just feel like all the stuff you ate and, like, there's bacteria that I, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I can't get by. Um, would you use a stranger's toothbrush? Fucking hell no. I've never done it, but fucking maybe I wouldn't. No. Okay. Fucking. <laughs> yeah. If you use a stranger's toothbrush, you are a sick, sick person. Yeah. You're a disgusting piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, do you ever touch your bum? Uh, clearly a fucking Brit wrote this one. Uh, do you ever touch your bum and not wash your hands afterwards? Yes. No, no, or maybe, but only the cheek, never the crack or yeah, I've been known to do this if I'm honest. Yes. And every you, time every time I scratch my asshole, I have to smell my fingers. Oh, damn, I wish I wasn't going to be on this boat with you, but I am. <laughs> I have to. It's I'm checking in on my asshole. Wait, so I want you to be honest here for a second. Yeah, when I'll... you scratch your hole, right? Mm -hmm. The good old BH. Yep. And then you smell your hand to see if like am, do I smell poopy? What are you hoping for? That I don't smell like there's a whole bunch of shit on my asshole. I'll go up. That's a smell <laughs> test. Sometimes, though, sometimes I'm not even going to lie, though. When it smells, when my finger smells like poop, I kind of get excited. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't mind it one bit. But, like, a part of me <laughs> is, like, I usually do it, like, if I'm out for a long time. And I was like, I have to check in on this asshole. Yeah, yeah. The worst is when you're sweating and you feel that bead of sweat. Go right into your butthole. It just funnels into that crack. Right down that little And you know what's canyon. crazy? The smallest bead of sweat, once it enters the crack of your ass, it feels like a fucking river flew oh. through this asshole because it's just soaking wet now. It's, yeah, it just becomes a tsunami off one drop. Yeah, it's crazy. It takes one pebble to make a wave. Also, <laughs> yeah. Also, not for nothing, but... When you scratch your asshole, you know what it's going to smell like before yeah. it gets to your nose. Oh, yeah. Like you could scratch your ass and be like, this is not going to be good. It, I, I'd be more worried about people if they didn't smell their asshole after they scratched it. Yeah, because, you know, at least then we know we have to wash our hands and we have to scrub this ace. Mm -hmm. But if you don't smell your hand, then you could be walking around with a shitty hand and a shitty ass. Don't want both, baby. Don't want both. Only want one of those. Yeah, I'll take um, one. I'll take one. Uh, next, uh, do you examine the snot you blow out into a tissue? How yeah. horrible. No, sometimes, but only if I know if I need a fresh tissue or, oh, my God, yes, I love seeing how goopy and gross my snot is. Uh, it's yes um, <laughs> because I'll, sometimes, I like to see, like, if there's any blood in my boogers. <laughs> I just like to see it. I'm just curious. For some reason, I can gauge all of my health through my poop and my boogers. You know what it is? I just like I just like blowing my nose and being like, damn, I got a lot out. And then you go, yeah, look at all that snot. See, I, yeah, it's like, yeah, I did it. Like, I, I need to check in and see if I blew my nose well enough. But there's something different that people have to understand. A New York booger from the pollution is sometimes outrageous. Has outrageous. Sometimes, sometimes it's got dirt in it. You ever see bird shit? That's kind of like what boogers in, in New York are like. It's like you blow your nose, and it's like for the most part, it's just it's just like the egg white. And then there's some like yellow. But every so often – wait, I'm talking about eggs now. <laughs> 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 it's, 
it's like clear, and then there's like some black in it. That's what yeah, I'm trying to say. There's big city boogers. That's yeah. what they are. Whole yeah. different echelon. Okay, do you openly talk about your poos? Okay. Yes. <laughs> These are, yeah, I mean, obviously, we do the show. Uh, but <laughs> the answers are no, that's a private matter, or only with my very closest people. <laughs> the last one is I talk about my poos with anyone who'd listen, to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to say that because I do it every week. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, do you leave your nail clippings on the floor? No, I always make sure I throw them in the bin. Uh, maybe a few escape, or I'll admit it, sometimes I just cut my nails and don't look where they go. No, I always toss that shit out. That shit's disgusting. Yeah, I do that too. Or I, I cut them on top of like the, the sink. The toilet. You do it all the time. Well, the, not the, well. I cut my nails in the sink, or I'll yeah. cut my toes on top of the toilet. Yeah, you always cut your nails in the sink, and I'll find them in there. <laughs> okay, do you ever pick and eat your dry skin? Um, I don't, but I have. So there is very rarely. Very yeah, let's go very rarely. That's fucking gross. Yeah, but I yeah, but I haven't done it in years. I've never done that. I wouldn't think to eat my skin. I remember like ten years ago I got sunburnt and I like I bit it because of Goldfinger and Austin Powers. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, it's so I, so I'm gonna say no, I guess. But I do I have done it before. Okay. What answer should I go with? I, I already put very rarely. Okay. Because it's happened. Yeah. Uh, do you bite or chew your nails? Yes. You said yes, I can't stop myself from doing it. No, I could stop myself from doing it, but I do it. It says if my nail tears, I might try and even it out. But do there you it do is. it just to do it? No. That's what I'll do. Cosmetic reasons only. Okay. <laughs> Cosmetic reasons only. Oh, my God. Uh, do you piss in the shower? Yeah. Every day. Oh, it says, it says, nope, I sometimes piss in my own shower, or I piss in my shower and public showers. I piss anywhere they'll let me. I- <laughs> <laughs> me too, y'all. I'll be pissing. Hell if there's yeah. there's water, I'm peeing, bro. You ever pee, though, and it stinks? Oh, stinky pee. Stinky pee is the worst. Stinky pee is so bad, dude. I Terrible. start to think I'm sick and, like... You know what I'm saying? Also, when piss is just hot, you're like, damn, I've, I've been boiling this piss all day. Yeah, there's some times where I have super hot piss. Dude, when I went to Vegas, I remember specifically going to the bathroom and peeing and being like, dude, this is desert piss. This is hot pee. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Could have been a UTI from the pools, too, though. I don't know. That, too. Uh, <laughs> do you ever piss in the bath? No. <laughs> How is that a question? Who pisses in the bath? I don't even piss in pools. Yeah, I don't do that either. I'll piss in a lake, though. I'll fill that lake up. I'll piss in the ocean. Yeah, I don't go in the ocean enough to, like, be pissing yeah. in that. I actually yeah. won't piss in the ocean because I'm afraid of animals. Oh, like your piss will attract, like, a shark or something? Yeah, or someone would be like, oh, my God, a piss. There's a seal around and, like, confuse <laughs> me with a seal. You know, try to, just eat my piss and then my leg. Try to fuck you. Try to fuck my leg or something. My leg? What am I saying? Okay. Um, do you enjoy the smell of your own farts? Whoa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is like, it says, no, all farts are gross. Okay, I may have thought this once or twice. And the last one is, LOL, of course I do. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah, my farts are fucking great. Love oh my smelling God, my... so many questions. Love smelling my own farts. Do you feel satisfied when you get a big bit of earwax out of your ear? Oh, yeah. 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 Who doesn't like that? You ever have those weird feelings where it rolls out of your ear? Yeah. It scares the ever-loving shit out of me. Why? Because you think I th- it's a bug? Yeah, I think there's a bug in my ear. That's one of my worst fears when you see videos of people like they have tweezers and they pull out like a whole cockroach out of their ear. Whatever the fuck. My mom got a uh, ant, a spider stuck in her ear and she could hear it crawling on her eardrum. What they did was they put peanut butter on a Q-tip. It was an ant, excuse me, not a spider. It was an ant. And they put a Q-tip with peanut butter in her ear, and it crawled onto it, and they pulled it out. That is the scariest thing I've ever heard. Hold on. Before we move forward, I have to tell you something, and I'm not sure if I said it on the show before, but I have to say it again anyway. My father once came, like, I saw him recently, and my dad always has some weird shit to say. But this time, I was like, wow. He goes, because I had mentioned, like, a tapeworm. And he goes, do you know how they get rid of tapeworms? And already I'm like, this is going to be wrong, whatever he says, <laughs> right? 
This is literally. Do you know what I'm gonna say? I know the story, dude. He told me that they put a plate of food on a table in front of you, and then the person just opens up their mouth like this, and then the tapeworm will slowly come out of their mouth, and then they keep pushing the plate back until the tapeworm comes out. <laughs> and he's like, and that's how they take it out, right? He said that to a 28 year old fully grown adult <laughs> and i literally said to him i was like dad i'm almost insulted that you think i'd fucking believe that for a second <laughs> what a psycho to actually think that's a thing dad or no. they give you a pill and it <laughs> dies and you shit it out or that you don't snake charm no. a fucking a fucking tapeworm out of your mouth this is probably a guy who's been to the hospital also like four times in his entire life Dude, and then like I remember telling that story to like Vin, my sister's husband, and she and and uh, he's like, "Where did he get that?" I'm like, "He literally probably heard that at like some guy at a gas station." It was just like, "Yep, going with that," and he just believed it, and that's how he went about his life. Jesus, what a ridiculous thing! What a uh, le- what thing. a legendary man. Yeah, he's insane. Um, do you get a certain pleasure from squeezing a juicy zit? Oh yeah, I don't. I hate that shit. I love I'm, that shit. It says yes. I love seeing the pus come out. Mm-hmm. Ew. Love it. Um, how often would you go without washing? No more than a day. I'd go two days max, or I've gone several days without washing in my time. Two days max. Okay. That's realistic. All right. We have arrived at your grossness. <laughs> what? <is it>? 60%. <laughs> what? I'm more 60? gross than clean? Yeah, you're filthy. Here we go. Here, this is a descri- uh, description. You are medium level gross. Okay. <laughs> I would argue that's pretty high, dude. You are medium level gross. Oh, a healthy, you. normal amount of gross, and it means you're probably pretty comfortable in your own skin. You secretly enjoy doing a loud fart, and sometimes you bite your nails. Whatever. Life's too short to worry about these things. I that's agree. Nice. I agree with that entire thing. 60% is just high. Yeah, whatever. I'll be fucking gross. Good thing it wasn't a sexual quiz. Man. Do you want to shit in a mouth? Ma- By the way, I don't know if I told. Oh, when I when I told you that I was getting all those weird DMs, you would be surprised how many people have been like, "Yo, my ex like, at, like they asked me to shit in their mouth." Anybody do it? Uh, no. I would or do I it. I didn't really inquire too much. Like I was kind of just like flipping through, but a lot of poop, a lot of poop out there. I would do it if somebody begged me to do it. You would shit in in like, wait. Not like somebody, not, not somebody I was like dating, but if it was like a spur of the moment thing and like somebody was just like, yo, like shit in my mouth, I would do it. There's no way you do it. Yeah. Why not? If that's going to get you off. Shit. Yeah. If the, it's not, I'm not, I'm not getting pooped in. <laughs> <laughs> getting pooped in. I'm yeah, not getting pooped in. You ever try to piss when your body is submerged in water? Yes. And you're, and at first your dick's like, we shouldn't, no, we can't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't do this. And then once you start peeing, it's like, okay, we're peeing, mm-hmm. right? Now imagine that, but shitting. My asshole would just be fighting me. It would be like <laughs> the pinball game. <laughs> I think it'd just I th- be fighting me. I think you're selling yourself short. I think if somebody wanted you to shit, you could do it. No, 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 I can't. My my body wouldn't let me shit out. Like I I don't know if I could like, I am. I've shit outdoors. <laughs> But only because there was nothing else that could happen here. Yeah. You know, I, I had no choice. My butt fought as long as it could and we lost, you know, and that's only happened a few times in my day. I've more often than not, I'm winning that battle. That's okay. But yeah, but sometimes you got to lose. Sometimes you lose and you poop outside. Okay. It's not every time that you wipe your ass with umbrella, but you know, <laughs> sometimes that happens as well. Got to do it. <laughs> got to do it. You know, got to do it. Uh, Gotta do it. But, you know, I don't know if I could shit into someone's mouth. And then I would throw up. I think you'd throw up as well. Because you have, I think you have a weaker stomach, stomach than me, no? No, 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 no. I have a pretty strong stomach. Um, if, someone sh- if you shit in someone's mouth and then you turn around and they're just like enjoying it and eating it and they're like gargling it up. Oh! All right. Well, now that you're painting the picture, I'm a little bit out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. 
And for if, that, if, I am out. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if this was shit Shark Tank, I'm out. You convinced me. I don't want. I don't want. To, I don't want to invest. Yeah, like I could shit into like a glory hole, and it fall and like it get into someone's mouth, but I don't have to see it. Mm. You know. But if I got a shit and the lights are on, I can't. I can't do this. Are you a sex light guy? What? Like, do, do, do you prefer darkness sex or do you prefer light sex? Um, I don't mind either way. I just, yeah. You don't have a don't, preference, though. You know what it is? I don't like... Um, I don't like overhead lighting. Right. I like natural lighting. Yes. Natural you know lighting and maybe one small side lamp. A small side lamp or one of those things that you plug into the wall... That like it sprays something to make your room smell nice, but it also has a little light on it. Yeah, yeah, like a little night light, or maybe one of those sea salt lamps, those Himalayan salt lamps. Yeah, it gives it a warm feeling, dude. Uh, sea salt lamps are hot. So you ever fuck hot. in the same room as a sea salt lamp, as a Himalayan sea salt lamp? Yes, dude, multiple times. Oof, it's nice. It gives you a nice pinkish hue to the room. Oh, so fucking hot. It feels like you're fucking in a cocoon or something, like a warm teepee. It makes me something. feel. It makes me feel safe, like sexually safe. <laughs> sexually safe. <laughs> Imagine being sexually in danger. That's nice too. Listen. Oh. <laughs> what? No, uh, I, I didn't know where to go with that one. I was. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, but yeah, uh, I think. Uh, I don't like. I don't understand people like at night they go home. And they have sex, and they turn on their overhead lights. Like that's psychotic to me. Yeah, anyone that uses their actual apartment overhead lights, lunatic, lunatic. Get a fucking lamp, you Get maniac. Some lamps. Get some warm lighting. Yeah, like unless you're filming like a car commercial or conducting like a science experiment, turn your fucking <laughs> overhead lights off. Seriously, like you can have lights on in your kitchen. Yes. Overhead lights in your kitchen, cool. But in the living room, in your bedroom, overhead lights? Ew. Yeah. Jesus Christ. That's like you're having like uh, like sex strictly for science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what that's like. Yeah, that re- literally is <laughs> strictly for science. <laughs> Mo- mood lighting is a real thing. Moonlighting. Oh, baby. Yeah. Yo, you ever have some of those days where the moon is just so bright for some reason and so, it hits your fucking your window and just comes right through and you're like, dude, if it's like someone's spying on us. I know. It's like the the universe back to space. Space is watching. Yeah, like the aliens are looking at our tits. Do you remember how blown away I get it when you could see the moon as the same time as the sun is out? Yeah, it makes no sense. I, I mean, it makes I sense. I lose my mind every time I see that. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. You know, when I was younger, I was a Star, a Star Wars fan, and I thought the moon was the Death Star. See, that's cool, <laughs> though. It was awesome to believe yeah, that. That's, that. That just sounds cool. None yeah, of that dude. sounds bad. A lot of my younger childhood, like, revolved around Star Wars. Like, I remember used to, I used to do this shit, like, the Force, and try to, like, grab the remote. Yeah, first of all, I do that anytime there's a fucking automatic door or an elevator. I do it every time. Yeah, you're like, mm-hmm. And it Always, because it feels real. Yeah, it just, because oh, because yeah. it is real. Uh, the other thing uh, I know you wanted to talk about, I just wanted to remind you is uh, the John Krasinski thing. Oh my God, this fucking John Krasinski. <laughs> just, just give me your quick your quick thoughts on this entire yeah. situation. I saw you getting vocal about it on Twitter, and when Twitter Joe goes, he goes. He goes. I, I didn't go too hard on that. I mean, I had a more, I had a bigger conversation in my group chat about it that I was not going to have like on the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically people are upset that John Krasinski who plays Jim Halpert in the office and you know, a bunch of other shit now, but that's what he's known for. Um, he created this thing called some good news. Uh, he created it during the quarantine because he felt like the news was very depressing and it was very sad. So he wanted to create this space where it was only feel good stories and blah, blah, blah. And it was free and it was on YouTube. Then now, you know, as the quarantine slowly kind of, you know, they're lifting some restrictions and this and that he, the, the idea was bought by Viacom. So he sold the structure of the show and the idea 
to Viacom for probably millions of dollars. And he's going to be an executive producer on it. He's not going to host it anymore. And people lost their minds as if he did something like horrible and dishonorable was the word that I saw that really pissed me off as if there's something like dishonorable about creating this great idea and then selling it to a network that can put it on TV. The, yeah. uh, the downside was that they're going to put it behind a paywall. So they're like, Oh, now this thing that people, you know, we're getting a good feeling from now it's behind a paywall, blah, blah, blah. But yo, to call John Krasinski, who by the way is a fucking producer and actor, not a fucking YouTuber like dishonorable it's just insane yeah you know like what's, you know it's dishonorable if you're a spy and like working for the soviets yeah like <laughs> treason okay yeah and it's like dude this guy didn't do anything fucked up man like that's just the way of the world it's the business of it you know and like i challenge anyone to go out there and be like i'm gonna create this thing and i'm gonna you know put time into it and work on it because make no mistake this dude put together a show like Facts. that took effort dude Facts. like you know what i mean like the thing that especially that he did with the whole office fucking uh cast like this was work that he was putting into this thing and he knew the end game like this is an idea that's great and listen it's still a great idea because he could sell it to viacom and then they have like this news outlet that's only good heartwarming stories cool it's not any bullshit it's not any tabloid celebrity shit it's like just feel good stories. It exists now because of John Krasinski and he's dishonorable because he sold the idea to Viacom when he's not going to be a YouTuber. He's not going to host this show. He's a fucking actor and he's a producer or a director or whatever the fuck he did. I don't, well, a quiet place. I think he wrote or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. Or he directed it. I don't know, but it's like, that's his job. You're asking him to just throw away his career for this idea to make you feel better. Like you're insane. That's just not the way it goes. And then there's no, there's nothing dishonorable about that. It's just, I think he did the right thing. You know, like you create something, it does so well, good. Quarantine's coming to an end. He's eventually going to have to go back to work. If you can make millions of dollars off of that and let it continue to live on, then okay. But what's the alternative? Is, is like, oh, the honorable thing to do is to quit your job and to keep doing this show for free on YouTube and just, you know, make people happy and just forget about your career. And, and or, or or go back to your career and just let it cease to exist. Just let it die and no one else do it and, and that's that. Or you make a bunch of money and it, and, it, and it continues to live on. It's an easy decision. And my biggest thing, the reason why I get mad is because there's these fucking verified freelance writers for fucking No One Knows Magazine and they just have to fucking write some bullshit and they're from Ohio and they live in New York City and they have a fucking fire escape and they feel like, oh, I know the struggles of being the fucking writer who struggled. Like, fuck you. Like, you like you just need something to be upset about and you want to be contrarian and have this opinion that's just bullshit, dude. And, I'm, I, and I just don't agree with any of that and I think it's fucked up. And I think that what he did was great. So anyone who's fucking could disagree with that can suck ass. <laughs> anyway, let's get to these ads. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree, I agree with you, bro. Um, no, but I just think it's, I think it's corny though. When people do stuff like that, it's like, yeah. you, know you know what else is corny? Um, that, let me ask you this. How important it, is it to you that you're verified on Twitter? I don't care. Give me your verified sticker. Then. You can't do that. That's fake. If you could, would you do it? Sure. No, you wouldn't. All right. I mean, it's fake. Like, you can't do that. Why not? All right, so let's trade handles right now. Trade handles? Yeah. No, that's we'll different. Just, we'll just trade accounts. What's the problem? No, that's totally different. I'll get uh, 800,000 more followers. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really use Twitter like that. And it's like, you know, whatever. It's only just to go off, King. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it means that much. I think it adds some sort of like, it gives you a look. Yeah. But it's not like, whatever. Isn't it I used to really care about it though. It's crazy that we live in a society that people take you more seriously if there's a blue check next to your name. I don't know if that they take you more seriously more than they just like read your opinion. I, no, you know what? You're kind of right because it's like, 
you don't, but the, the reason why is because you don't know if this is an actual person saying this or if it's like a bot or someone hiding behind some like random Lady Gaga account. Right. But right. if you're verified, then it's like, oh, I assume this is you. So like, it's like, that's why. Right. It's strange. Yeah. And I want it so bad. Yeah. I, you know, this quest for me to get verified has been one of the most disheartening things of all time. I need more media shit. Somewhat. What does that mean? I need like more like, like, p- hey, guys, people out there. And the major things, I need people to write about me so I could use these as references and get verified. I think that's all bullshit. Like, I don't think those things matter because most of the people that I know that are verified are verified through an agency. Like, I got verified on Instagram because of my agent. Right. And I got verified on Twitter because... What the fuck? I got verified on Twitter because of when I worked at Elite Daily, they verified the whole company. God damn it. And that was also through an agency, which I believe was the same agency that I'm with now, where it's like, oh, we have this company. And that's why, like, you see these random accounts, like all meteorologists are like fucking verified. You know, Bro, when, I, mean? I, like, see, when I see people with 1400 followers and they're verified, I want to lose my fucking mind. Yeah. I want it. I just want it so bad. I don't know why. It's the instant gratification of the verification. I try. I, you know, I submitted you twice. I know you did. And it's because, like, I don't have, like, press shit. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think what more like do I have to, to do? First of all, I, I let me suck your titties. will never die. <laughs> I'm in, I am ingrained in culture for the rest of my days. <laughs> let me just get a blue check. That's all I want is a blue check. That's all I need is a blue check. People take me yeah. more. Stuff. Fuck. Farda. Farda. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things that the day that I have that, can we have a party? On, uh, on on FaceTime, yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Dude, Very nice. Verified. Yeah. I just need But you should stuff. actually you should ask your manager. I will. Pat, what the fuck? Uh, I think I think he'll uh I think he'll be able to do that for you. I, I think so. I think so. I'll ask him. Remember when Schultz said he'd get you verified? Yeah, that fucking piece of shit. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I texted him a couple times, said that during quarantine. Uh just tell him. Are you doing a uh, hyenas today? I am. I'm going on the history hyenas uh, Patreon. They have a, a show called No Nets that they do. Cool. And uh, that is going to be fun. Yes, it's going to be wild as always with those guys. They Love they want to get you on there too. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Don't you have a phone call or something that you got to go do? <sighs> yes, I have a phone call to go to in seven minutes. So we should wrap this up. Danny, where can they find you? You can find me at Danny Lopriori on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, I wanted to take just one minute. Uh, I want to dedicate this episode to George Floyd. Um, That man was murdered. People need to know that. I know a murder when I see one. I don't want to stay on it for too long. But that man was murdered on video. And that's all I need to say about that. Uh, Danny, well said check out the show at the basement yard on uh instagram uh and the patreon patreon.com slash uh the basement yard and yeah go to uh my other youtube channel youtube.com slash uh joe santagato and also opl the show that we were talking about before uh youtube.com slash other people's live to go check that show out uh and we'll see you guys next time peace